Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested. Happy Friday, and for today, I have a really quick show and tell for you of three products, all from the same company. One something old, something new, and then something we're going to customize. Uh, the company is Tiny Circuits, and uh, we've covered them before. You may have seen them at uh, various maker fairs over the past 10 years. Uh, they make a uh, Arduino compatible uh, platform, the a stackable shield. So it's called Tiny Duino, and it's uh, like you know, two and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeter boards, as opposed to having one board with all your I.O. and your different tethered uh, connections. Uh, it's all designed to be stackable, so you can have as small of a project or electronics device as you want. So uh, from battery to speakers to displays, to GPS to LED lights, all sorts of different things that they sell on their boards that then all fit together in one stack. And to demonstrate this platform, Tiny Circuits has created a bunch of really fun uh, miniature kits over the years. Uh, this is one we've shown on Tested a while ago. This is their miniature arcade cabinet um, based off of Space Invaders. Uh, they ended up selling like um, a laser cut version of this. This is a 3D printed prototype. But in the back, you can see it has that stack of their tiny Duino boards. In the front, it's a little OLED screen, and then there's one for uh, battery, one for your input, and all of that then is wired to some LiPo batteries, as well as some novel controls. It actually has working controls, and with the memory, with the processor here, they can run things like a version of Space Invaders. Really neat stuff. Um, and they've always had a ton of fun making miniature things, whether it's a tiny violin or an LED lightsaber. Uh, their latest project uh, you may have seen on your favorite technology or gaming site is called Thumbie, and they sent me one to check out. If it looks like a tiny Game Boy, that's kind of what it is. It's inspired by that first-gen Game Boy design, and this is roughly... I think you would call it one fifth scale. So it's about 1.2 inches tall. The Game Boy, I believe, was about six inches tall. So one fifth that size uh, has a tiny OLED screen of 72 pixels wide by 40 pixels tall, two, uh, two megabytes of built-in memory, and then a battery built in as well. And uh, you can transfer data and charge it over micro USB. Uh, there's a little switch on top for power. And then input-wise, it's just a D-pad, a directional pad, and two buttons, an A, B button. Uh, the start and select indents here don't actually work. And this is on Kickstarter right now. It's really kind of a novel thing. They've designed it to maybe be something you attach on a keychain and does come with games. They've programmed and built in five games. So uh, their version of Tetris, of Snake, uh, they have a dungeon crawler, there's an endless runner, and then there's even their version of Asteroids, which actually plays like Asteroids with momentum. So uh, you can code your own games. They have a browser-based IDE. It runs micro Python, uh, and the idea is if you want to pick this up for $20, you can just attach it to your keychain, show it off to your friends. I can tell you at one-fifth scale, the games are playable, but I wouldn't say fun. They're more novel than they are something that I'd actually want to play for long periods of time. But as a platform and as a uh, demonstration of the power of miniaturization, it is a really impressive little piece of technology. And if this is one-fifth scale, that's close enough to one-sixth scale that I could find out some ways to incorporate these into one my one-sixth scale collection. So that's Thumbie, um, and for 20 bucks you can back this, and they're hoping to have these shipping early next year uh, in a variety of colors as well if you want to pay a little more. So something old, something new, and then something we're also going to customize. In checking out the Thumbie, I also uh, visited the Tiny Circuit site and saw that they had a kit for a miniature TV. It's called the DIY TV kit. It uses that same 
a stacked tiny Duino um, platform where it's an OLED screen, there's an SD card reader, and a tiny speaker as well as a LiPo battery all fit into the form factor of this center nylon TV chassis, this retro TV design, uh, which I think is really neat. Um, now, one of the cool things is they sell this as a kit that has everything you need to put this together, including this little chassis, but they've also uh, open sourced the design for this. And you can download an STL uh, to print your own chassis to customize. And there's a version of this where uh, if you have a 3D printer, you don't even need the to get their printed version. You can just get the electronics components and save a little money there. So I have a 3D printer and I thought it'd be fun to print out uh, one and customize it. So I had some mint green resin already loaded up. So I printed, downloaded the file and printed out the pieces for uh, this TV. So this is their SLS nylon version and this is my cured resin version. I like the idea of maybe painting it up to look a little bit like that Simpsons television, maybe the purple color, purple and green could work really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some tiny masking tape, uh, take this off, do a little bit of masking, apply some paint, uh, and turn this into a little working television. All right, so now that I have my chassis painted, it's time to install the components. And the installation of the components, the boards, is dead simple. Now, with the resin print, it uh, the, the accuracy of the print is slightly off from the center nylon design. Uh, my print had a little bit of bowing, um, some of the pieces need a little bit of sanding just to make sure the boards perfectly uh, snap fit in or press fit in. There's no other hardware required. Uh, so I'm gonna use a mix of the switches from their built-in kit with my now painted chassis. And I even added a little bit of wood accents to make it look extra retro. Uh, so the first step is I'm gonna pop in that OLED screen which also has the connection to the LiPo battery. And the OLED screen has built into the board the controls. So there are four buttons on the side, one for power, one for channel, and one for uh, volume up and volume down, as well as a hard toggle switch on the bottom for power. And I wanna make sure that hard toggle switch is aligned with this uh, separate tiny piece that I've slotted into the side. So once that's all pressed in, uh, because it's the stackable board system, the second board just pops in as well. It fits in the exact same volume. And this board has the SD card slot as well as the connection to the speaker. So it's a tiny little speaker here, which then I'll peel off the adhesive and affix to the back of this 3D printed chassis. Uh, and once everything is plugged in, I wanna make sure the buttons work and power is working. Um, there's a little bit of juice in here and I can flip it on and we have a working mini television. So when I say it's a tiny, 
television. Of course, it's not receiving a broadcast or streaming anything from the internet. It's reading media files off of the SD card. But one of the really lovely things that uh, they've designed into the interface is they have the videos playing kind of all at the same time. As I switch between the quote unquote channels, it's not starting the video files at the beginning. It's actually in this tiny TV mode, it's playing the files and as I jump through, it's jumping to the right timestamp uh, for how long the device has been on. So as I flip through the channels, you know, if I've been watching for five minutes or 10 minutes and I flip to the next channel and I'm in the middle of a, let's say a tested video, it'll be at that 10 minute spot. Uh, and these video files are, uh, they're encoded in their TSV format. So the, there's a free application for both Windows and Mac OS you can download and really quickly convert your MP4s into a small and scale for the resolution and the aspect ratio of this tiny TV. Uh, I'm also really impressed by the image quality uh, at this scale. Uh, the speaker gets pretty loud as well. And one of the neatest things is the kit does come with a wireless IR remote with the same function. So I can actually remotely press power on and actually turn it on. There goes, mute the volume a little bit, and you can see a tiny video playing. I've loaded on a few tested videos. And aiming it, it actually has a nice little static effect as I switch between the channels. There's a little number indicator in the bottom right hand corner for, for, the, uh, for what quote unquote channel you're on, what number video file you're on. Uh, and with the eight gigabyte included micro SD card, you can fit like five hours of programming on this. I love this little television. Uh, it's just so neat as an example of uh, a, a really fun application of their tiny Duino platform. Again, super easy to put together, whether you use their center nylon kit or 3D print and paint your own. Uh, and it's a fun thing to add to your desk. So you got uh, kits all over the place on tiny circuits. I'll have links to them uh, in the description below. And if you want to check out the Thumbi, uh, that is again available on Kickstarter right now just launched and met its goals so it's going to be a real product and then this tiny tv is already available and shipping today uh, thanks so much for watching have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week bye